Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm Steve Down and this is my guitar. Um, we are at the end of the series looking at Midnight Blue by Kenny Burrell. Thanks so much to all of you who have followed along. Um, I hope you've got something out of it. Um, thanks for all of you who have um, supported, whether that's liking, subscribing, commenting, um, and a special thanks to all of the people who have signed up to the Patreon as well. It's my first Patreon, um, and this is my first um, proper series on there actually. Um, so thanks so much for the support. And if you've got any comments about how I can improve this, um, or where you'd like to, it to go next, um, if you've got any specific things that you'd like to take a look at, please do post it in the comments below, whether you're watching on YouTube or whether you're watching on my Facebook page, Instagram, or on Patreon as well, um, as I would love to know what it is that you would like to do next. This week, we're gonna be taking a look at the very last chorus of the solo, and then I'm gonna be giving you my five favorite licks from the whole solo, which I think are the best takeaways for your own playing. Um, the whole point of this series has been that you take these techniques, be it harmonic, melodic, or whether it's legato techniques or picking techniques, we take all of that stuff and we use it as a springboard for our own soloing, rather than just see the solo as a party piece. As always, if you find this video useful, then please do um, drop a comment below, um, give it a like, hit the bell if you wanna see, uh, if you wanna get a notification for the next video. Um, please subscribe if you wanna see more. And if you'd like to support me in making more, then, then Patreon's the best place to go for that. And the link is coming up on the screen now. So let's get into the first A section. So in this section here, Kenny actually goes back to the original structure of the A section to the B section, with the A section being a vamp pretty much on F minor. You can hear the bass player going F, G to A flat, and that kind of suggests F minor, G minor, A flat, like the chords from the beginning, um, and the ones that he uses in the first two choruses of the solo to comp himself. Um, in the last chorus that we did, he actually just stayed on that A section, did it twice. Um, whereas this week we go in, back into the B section after we've done the A section. So the B section, if you remember um, from a couple of weeks ago, was where we had a minor two, five, one in F minor, and then he went to B flat 13, and then went to B flat minor nine, A flat minor nine, and then C, altered or C7 sharp 9 sharp 5 um, and then that's the end of that B section it takes you right back. So this week um, we've got a phrase that just repeats itself so it's a four bar phrase that repeats itself he's using fourths again so we're going to take a quick look at the riff and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> So he's using fourths as his main vocabulary um, from the minor pentatonic scale and also a little bit from the blues scale as well. So he starts off with this legato bit. So here that can be a little bit tricky. So I use my fourth finger for this. So I've got my fourth finger across the fourth fret on the top two strings and then I'm pulling off to the first two strings. Um, if you want to visualize this better, then it's position one of the minor pentatonic scale. Um, so you can we can actually harmonize that scale in fourths. So let's just take a very quick look at that.
can see I went up the neck through all of the different positions. I used the cage system for it. If you've watched previous videos, I'm not a massive fan of just using that system as a standalone because I think it forces you to play in boxes thinking vertically. And as you'll see in the next couple of examples, I give you the binder pentatonic scale um, going laterally up the neck which helps you to be able to connect those positions better and gives you more creative freedom with your soloing. So just a bit of technique focus on this little lick. Um, we are pulling off onto the first fret. I've got my thumb positioned just behind the first fret here. That's where I've got most of the pressure going. Um, and then with my fourth finger, I'm flicking off downwards like that. So I've got a really firm grip here and then my fourth finger with the pushing down on the top two strings, flicks downwards. Now to avoid any extraneous string noise as you do flick your fourth finger off, um, I'm doing some dampening here on the bridge for the bottom four strings. The reason why I'm doing this is because it's actually quite a, a violent movement as you pull off and you could, as you move the guitar, or if there is any movement of the guitar, um, you could quite easily cause these other strings to ring out, which isn't gonna sound great because they're open strings and they're gonna clash with what you're doing. So just pop your hand, the palm of your hand, to rest on the bridge, just lightly palm muting to stop any ringing open strings. Lateral thinking is the best way for connecting these caged positions. Um, you might know them as caged or in the number positioning. So it's position one here or the E minor position from the caged system ruling. Um, now, it's as I said before, it's really good to connect those up together. So here's an exercise where you can use hammer-ons and pull-offs to connect it laterally up the fret. So you can use this particular exercise in your solos. So where Kenny is doing this, you could try that in different positioning. Okay, so try that in your own soloing just to create something which is a little bit different. Let's move on to the next section of this particular phrase. The next bit he does, the second half of it, he slides from here and then slides from here. So sliding from the seventh fret back to the sixth fret and then sliding from the fourth fret back to the first fret. So he's using that lateral thinking there again. He's in this position here, but he's going along the fret rather than up the strings. So he's going from the seventh fret back to the sixth fret and that suggests that kind of blue scale there. And he's harmonized it in fourths and then going backwards from the fourth fret down to the first fret again. Here's a little exercise showing you that same lateral thinking with the minor pentatonic scale, but using slides this time. So again, just like with the hammer-ons and the pull-offs, you can use slides to make that pentatonic scale sound a little different and a little less boring. And if you use it laterally thinking, then it's gonna make it sound even more fluid. So give that stuff a try in your own solos. Let's move on to the B section. So there's not a lot to say about this B section here because essentially what he's doing is taking the B section from the melody, from the head, and he's actually just playing it and ever so slightly improvising on it. So some of the lines that he does there, so that little run up there is ever so slightly different because obviously in the head it's, we do that. Um, and then he does the same thing when he approaches the minor nine, he does, he goes, there, so it's an echo of that earlier run-up of the scale. This is all stuff that's coming from the F minor scale, from the F natural minor scale. And here, this is Kenny essentially calling the band back to the head, because after this chorus in the solo, he goes straight back to the head. 
this is a technique you can use when you're playing with your band, uh, whether that's a trio or a quartet or, or whatever, you can use this to signal to the band that you're gonna go back to the head. Kenny does quite a big signal here because he does a full eight bars, but what you could do is you could just play the last little bit. <laughs> just you know those last couple of bars that could be your signal you can set that up with your band beforehand by telling them or you could decide it in the moment and, and give them a bit of a facial cue as well so after this section he goes back into the head plays through the a section and the b section and then he goes back into that little groove from the beginning and i think it i think there's like a little splice there or something because they cut off the last bar of the b section um I'm not sure whether it's a, a, like a tape splice, whether they did it in the studio. Uh, it just sounds a little bit aggressive to me, but um, who knows? Um, I, it sounds like there's a little bit of a drum roll underneath, so might not be a splice, but for whatever reason, just be aware of the fact that the last bar of the B section is cut off. And then he moves into that little groove at the end. Um, the way I've ended it is I've played an F minor six there at the end there. So that's the end of our study on this piece. Thanks again for following along. And if you have done watching all of the previous five episodes, um, it's been real fun looking at this piece because, th because there's so much in it that you can learn and use in your own soloings. The first thing is how to solo over one chord or one tonal area, which is that F minor. Um, and that pops up time and time again. And Kenny finds new ways every single chorus to be able to approach that. Um, we then look at a couple of different ways of how to approach that minor two, five, one. And we can see the first time that he does it, he does it with F harmonic minor with some chromatic enclosure to create that outside kind of sound. And then the second time he goes full on altered and then starts to um, pull out some arpeggios from in between. If you remember, we talked about how Stevie Wonder does that as well. Um, then he goes into chords and starts soloing with chords. And then he starts to solo with fourths in the next chorus, and then we've got that really big, long, complicated, fast line, which is great for your alternate and economy picking. Um, and it was also it shows us how we switch between F major and F minor to create some different sounds. And then the chorus that we've just looked at, he expands that approach using fourths even more. I think Kenny is really melodic in this solo. I think it's an absolute work of art what he's created on this one. And it's no wonder that Van Morrison took a little bit more than a passing bit of inspiration from it. What I would suggest you do is you take these licks and use them as a springboard for your own improvisational explorations. Um, don't just play them as they are, play them, learn them, understand the harmonic approach underneath and then start varying and improvising on top of them and making them your own so that you can use them in your own solos. As I said, use them as a springboard to your creative freedom. So here are those five licks. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. If you've made it all the way through, um, thanks for sticking around. Um, as always, if you want to see more, then do hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button if you want to be notified when the next video comes in. Um, I'd love to hear what you think, um, even if it's something that you don't like. So please just pop that in the comments below. And then if you want to support me in making more, then Patreon's the place to go for that. So um, head over on the link that's appearing on the screen now. Um, there's a link in the show notes as well below. As I said at the top of this video, please do let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to cover next. Um, I'm going to have a long, hard think this week and make something really cool for you next week. Um, but if there's anything that somebody suggests that is even better, 
then I'm definitely going to go that way. So please do pop it in the comments below or over on the Patreon um, or on Instagram or Facebook or wherever it is that you're listening. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for your support um, and happy practicing. See you next week.